Ready? There was a definite era of futuristic races. It didn't get any faster than F-Zero. Wipeout was huge. Extreme G was pretty good. And others existed too. Come the mid noughties and the genre rather felt to me like it had gone into hibernation until the current crop of medium budget games appeared and reignited it. They've done alright, but weren't expected to have the impact that the equivalents from the 90s and early noughties did. So today on yesteryear's Mac Games, we'll dig up a forgotten title from the genre's golden era and give it a good play. The game is Tanaka, or whatever your preferred pronunciation of that is, produced by Pacific Media Works, who shared it with the world in 1999. Written in their own cross-platform framework, Open Media Toolkit, it will run on Windows and classic Mac OS, although a full version, ooh, a review copy actually, of the Mac OS build is currently the only one that has made it to archive. Fingers crossed a Windows version will show up, it's always a shame to lose things to time. Now I've covered a Pacific Media Works game before. They were responsible for the top-down shooter Vitamin. I found it amusing that the two worlds of these very different games took place on what was considered by Pacific's old website to be part of the same solar system. The entity that was Pacific's Media Works ceased to exist shortly after Tanaka, but developer Yves Schmid took the open media toolkit onto what he did next, Garage Cube, which is still here today. Anyway, enough pre-blurb, let's jump into the game. Take an anti-grav vehicle and pilot it around the roads of Tanaka City. Quite why all the roads of the future happen to be half pipes is anyone's guess, but it makes for interesting visuals. Controls are idiot proof, it's actually quite restrictive on how one can move. You don't actually turn the craft, just strafe left and right to reach boosters, avoid hazards, and overtake the competition. There's a bit of a storyline for this one. It's the future, 2525 to be exact. The player is off to their future job in their future car on the future road, where other future commuters are busy doing the same thing. Apparently there's naff all to do in this dystopia, so the entertainment starved populace egg the drivers on to whiz around recklessly, fire lasers at each other, tolerate bits of infrastructure that make absolutely no sense from a city planning point of view, drive over ramps for a bit of airtime, and dodge exploding mines. Hey, I actually do the latter too, around all the potholes that the city council can't be bothered to fill. The haptic feedback when I hit one is very realistic. So, what's at stake here? Why are the residents of Tanaka partaking in this particularly dangerous endeavour? Is it money? Power? Freedom? An old Mac? Nah, it's just the right to survive. How boring. Actually, that's not entirely true. There is prize money, and it's vital. After setting up a profile, players will find themselves with 2,000 monies and nothing else. Picking and choosing between the various chassis, engines and weaponry is fairly enjoyable, with weight being the important factor to consider when picking a loadout. A weak engine will struggle if the player has loaded their craft with heaps of missiles, although firing them at other races is an excellent solution to that. Lasers come in an assortment of configurations, depending on how much money is spent. Dual lasers are probably the best option, they fire forwards and backwards, while the multi-laser shoots side to side as well. You can't turn at the same time as shooting these, as your craft seems to move faster than the projectiles it's launched. It is therefore possible to shoot yourself, which is a stupid oversight and took me multiple seemingly random deaths to figure out. Now with a ship, players can delve into the campaign, or specify a custom race. The campaigns start by hand-holding the player through all the different types of game mode. Each stage has a bit of blurb that helps set the scene, and upon completion, prize money is awarded. As the levels progress, so does the complexities of the circuits, with more hazards and obstacles to contend with. Opponents will gradually get more dangerous and faster too, and the police will also get fairly hands-on. Apparently a perfectly acceptable way for law enforcement to break up an illegal street race is to simply ram all the participants. As well as a standard race, the other modes include Total Carnage, which is a last man standing challenge, Against the Clock, which is a time trial, Escort, where the player must ensure the survival of another craft, and Duel, which is a 1v1. The standard race and Total Carnage modes are probably the two best. Escort just means shoot all the others but one. Time trial is a bit of a chore, and my experience with duels have either been impossible or over within 7 seconds. One missile and a few laser shots to the back of their craft before they get up to speed and jobs are good. One particular whinge I do have about game progression is that irrespective of the amount of cash a player has pumped into their vehicle, they will only ever get the same amount back after it's totaled. I can't be bothered to do lots and lots of free races to earn the funds back in order to become competitive in the campaign every time my car exploded, so I ended up just loading the last save every time I lost. The difficulty of the opponents in the free race also goes up as time goes on, so it's feasible that one could get completely stuck in a feeble vehicle against completely overpowered competition. 
the game takes a very different approach to its tracks in comparison to other futuristic races, as all the tracks would look to be generated on the spot. The free play configuration screen illustrates how it does that fairly well, with an overall complexity level tied to a customizable number of hazards, bonuses and inversions. The game will then pick a set of textures to bundle this up in, and the result is that while no two stages are technically the same, they all unfortunately feel the same. No one can have a favourite track, because there aren't any. A sensible assumption is that this was a clever way around the limits of being a small independent game, with two programmers. I wouldn't say I have a favourite hazard, but I definitely have a least favourite. These bloody doors. They go up and down as they see fit, and vehicles can't do anything about it. It's basically an occasional arbitrary halt. The ability to trigger them by driving over a switch could have added some skill into dealing with them. That said, visuals are really quite good for a late 90s shareware effort. The city has character, and a few peculiar billboards. Ooh, high-tech pasta. And while the vehicle models could maybe have benefited from more detail and a tad more diversity in shape, I think it's a neat touch that they take visual damage. The music feels quite minimalistic, it definitely contributes to the mood, but it's not memorable at all, and can get very samey after extended periods of play. Actually everything about Tanaka does. This is definitely a game to play in short bursts, or to show off the graphical capabilities of an old Mac. It does look great considering the very modest system specifications, which is something that Inside Mac Games picked up on in their review from back in the day, which is helpfully still online. The reviewer was fairly impressed, and I wonder if that was down to nothing like this really existing on the Mac up until this point. It would take another three years for Wipeout to show up. I can definitely see how Tanaka would have made a splash back on its release, but I don't think that this is a title that's aged particularly well. That said, there are some really cool things about this game that are best experienced by trying it oneself. So grab a download for Classic Max, or the Sheep Shaver emulator, at the Garden or the Repo. Links in the description. That'll do then for this edition of YY's MG. If you enjoyed this, be sure to check out the rest of my channel. I mostly cover old Mac games, but occasionally delve into apps and hardware. So, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to keep on top of future instalments, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.